Number 51, unreasonable results. A 75 kilogram man stands on a bathroom scale in an elevator that accelerates from rest to 30 meters per second in two seconds. Letter A, calculate the scale reading in Newtons and compare it with his weight. Okay, so here I have a little picture. Man is in an elevator over here. He weighs uh, 75 kilograms and we have a scale down here on the bottom. All right, so first thing is uh, this elevator, it says we'll be accelerating upward, right? It doesn't say upward, but I, I am assuming they're talking about upward. All right, so the A is something. Now, in order to find A, they don't tell us, but they do give us enough information in order to do that. So why don't we do that first, right? It says that the elevator initially is starting at rest of zero, right, meters per second. It's getting to a velocity of 30. I assume that's the final, right, 30 meters per second. It takes the elevator to go from zero to 30 in two seconds, okay? From this information, then, can I calculate my acceleration? Sure. Think back to the formulas of kinematics. Vf is equal to Vi plus At. Right, so the final velocity was 30. The initial was zero. The acceleration is what I'm looking for, and the time was two seconds. So simply divide out the right-hand side by two and the left-hand side by two, and we find that the acceleration here is 15.0 meters per second squared. All right, so that is the A, and it's positive. So I can get rid of this question mark right now. And let's plug in 15.0 meters per second squared. Okay, that's a pretty large acceleration. Now, in order to try to figure out the forces that are uh, acting in this problem, uh, because we have to figure out what the scale reads, and the scale is detecting newtons, which are units of force, and we have to detail the free body diagram. So first, let's detail, since it, uh, since it is a problem in the y direction, we have to detail the weight first of the man, right? So the weight always points straight down. So that's equal to mg. So his weight uh, will be equal to his mass, which was 75.0 kilograms multiplied by the gravitational acceleration of, of 9.80. So the weight is going to be 75 times 9.8, 735, right? So we're going to value 735, and that's in terms of newtons. Great. And that'll be negative when I plug it into the formulas. Now, since there is a net acceleration in the positive y direction, I know that there has to be some force pulling up, right, on this elevator. All right, I'm just going to call it something like F applied, or you could call it tension, you can call it whatever you want. Um, but I think force applied might make the most sense. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to calculate that force applied, and then we'll see how we can relate that to what the scale may read. All right, so we have everything we need to know. We can use this equation on the right-hand side, change and not change, excuse me, some of the forces in the y direction should equal the mass of the object that's accelerating multiplied by the acceleration of that object in the y direction. So some of the forces, we have the applied force, which we don't know what it is. We have the weight of the uh, man, right, which we found was negative, should be negative, right, 735. The mass was 75 kilograms and his acceleration is 15.0 meters per second on upward. So to solve this, just simply add the 735 right to both sides. Oops, 735. So that cancels. My force applied then should be fairly straightforward. 75 times 15 and then plus 735. So we get a value of about 1860, right? Or 1860 and 60 newtons. Okay, it almost looks like a theta there. 1860 newtons. All right, so that's the force that's applied. Okay, great. So now um, let's think about what the scale should read. Okay, so you might you might say, well, wait a minute. Okay, so if this is the force that's being applied, then that's great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to think about um, taking right Newton's third law, and if this is the force that's being applied on upward, I'm going to write the vector that same vector on downward. So I'm going to add it to his weight. All right. Well, the problem with that is though, then the your, your summations are becoming too large, okay? Because then you would be adding the 1860 with the 735, all right? So if you think about what the net force is acting on this system, okay? That might be a, uh, a little easier. Just simply solve this equation, but don't break up the sum of the forces, right? So you can say some of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass, which was 75.0, multiplied by the acceleration of 15.0. So the sum of all the forces in the y direction will be equal to uh, 75 plus 15. Let's go, sorry, 75 times 15. 1125, right? I'll just say 1130. 
for sig figs. 1130 newtons. This is the net force. This is net. This is not the force applied. So this is what you're really thinking about if you are considering adding something to the weight here on the scale. Okay, for example, here's the picture again. Okay, there's, a, there's an individual in here, right, standing on a scale. Okay, we know that the scale here, all right, will detect the forces present. So it will detect his weight, which is pointing down. So that weight was 735 newtons, okay? Now, what else is it going to detect? Well, it's going to detect the additional force above his weight, right? For, in, in other words, if I had another vector pointing straight up, and let's say that was 700, oop, 735 newtons, okay? Tell me, what's the sum of the forces in this problem? Zero, right? And what then does that mean the acceleration should be? Zero, right? If you look at the sum of the forces equals ma, if this side is zero, then this side has to be zero. The only way this side is going to be zero is if the acceleration is zero. So when the forces exactly balance, you get zero acceleration, okay? And, and the scale would read exactly this amount, 735. But there is an acceleration in this problem right? The acceleration is uh, 15 meters per second. And in order for this person to experience a 15 meter per second squared, excuse me, 15 meter per second squared acceleration, the force that's applied has to be, uh, we just calculated 1860, 1860 newtons. All right. But this is not the total force that's being then added to his weight. It's the difference, right? Because remember, the 735 Newton force that would have been pointing up is just to cancel out his weight pointing down. That would have been under no acceleration circumstances, right? So in order to find the additional amount here, we would just subtract the two, okay? That would give us the net force of 1130 or so, right? I know the math works out a little differently. I'm rounding because of sig figs. And then this is the force that you would then essentially add to his weight, the 1130, okay? But then if you add that right to the 735, get, guess what you get? You get the 1860 again, all right? But that's how it kind of arises. That's a little more detailed picture. So this is what the, this is what the scale would read, 1860 newtons. Now, how, uh, what does it say? How does this compare with his weight? Um, <laughs> He's taking a nap. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, that's nap time. So um, we have, what we do is a simple ratio. So we do 1860 all over uh, his initial weight of 735. We just get a quick ratio here, okay? So we get 1860 over 735, and we get 2.53. 2.53, so the scale would read 2.53 times, or two and a half times greater than what his weight would actually be. So now it says, well, what is unreasonable about this? Blah, blah, blah. I mean unless this is some kind of, I don't know, ride at Six Flags or whatever the case is, um, you know, this is way, way too much. This is way too high of a final velocity to achieve in this time frame. Um, you know, it's just, it's unreasonable. 30 meters per second, right? Uh, that, that would be like, if you just think back to the prior problem, remember 50 kilometers per hour was equal to about what, what was it, 14 meters per second? So this is double that. So this is almost like 110, somewhere around there. 110 kilometers per hour. It's a little nuts, right? That'd be that'd be some elevator. And you're reaching that speed in two seconds, right? <laughs> that would be a fun ride, but not you wouldn't find that in your office building. All right. So anyway, that's one of the parts that's unreasonable. What makes it unreasonable? I don't know. It could be a whole bunch of things. The time that was measured or maybe the final velocity was measured incorrectly, something like that. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe. Until next time.